says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Many people today are living their lives in fear. They're worried about the future and what it will hold. They're worried about world conflicts or conflicts within their own families. They're worried about financial problems or worried about their children or their health. Many today in the world are being persecuted in the name of Jesus Christ. But in Romans 8.31, we are told that if God is for us, who can be against us? In this sermon entitled, If God Be For Us, Dr. Smith looks at what this verse in Romans means and what protection we can expect from God. And now here is Dr. Smith with the message, If God Be For Us. Hi, dear neighbor. We greet all of our many precious friends in that name that is above every name, Christ Jesus our Lord. For some of us, this has been a glad day. For others, it's been a sad day. But for all of us, it's been God's day. I just wonder, have you praised Him? Have you thanked Him for letting so many things pass you by? While others have lost loved ones today, your loved ones are all alive. While others this day has lost fortunes, God still allows you to have your money. And our subject for this message is one that I believe that will help every one of you that will stay with us for the next few moments. Our subject is, If God Be For Us. And the scripture is found in Romans chapter 8 and verse 31. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, then who can be against us? That's a double question. If God be for us, number two, who can be against us? I want to ask you, if God Almighty is for you, then who can be against you? I am convinced that whoever may be against you, they will not count. Pharaoh was against Moses, but who won? You remember Ahab and Jezebel were against Elijah, but who won? You remember that Nebuchadnezzar and Belshazzar, they were against Daniel, but who won? You remember that Herod was against John the Baptist, but who won? You remember that Agrippa and Festus and Felix and Caesar, all of them were against the Apostle Paul, but who won? All of these saints won because God was for them. God, have you ever stopped to think about what an ally you have in God? Have you ever thought about the force that is behind you if God be for you? And then that question, who can be against you, stands unanswered. If God be for you, let me ask you a question. Do you have any reason to think that God might not be for you? Is your life such a life that God would be for it? Is your work such a work as God would be for it? Is your talk the way you talk, is it so that God would be for you or against you? Now the great question is, if God be for you, the question is, are you for him? There has never been a man, never been a woman on the face of this earth that was for God, that God didn't join with them and become their ally. I had rather have God for me than to have all of the armies, all of the legislators. I'd rather have God for me than to have all the presidents that ever sat in the White House. I'd rather have all of God for me than to have all of the congressmen and senators that ever gathered under the dome of the capital of the United States. I'd rather have God for me than all of the armies, all the air forces of the world. Is God for you? What a wonderful thing it is to know that God is for you. With God for you, you're not afraid. You're not afraid of anything. You're not afraid of anyone. You're not afraid to preach without fear and without favor if God is for you. If you walk into your pulpit on Sunday morning to preach and you know that God is for you and you know that you have the message that God wants you to bring, you're as bold as a lion. You're as courageous as a bear robbed of her cubs. I tell you, if God is for you, you don't have to worry about who's against you. During my lifetime, you know, I've been saved since September the 4th, 1932. 
And during my lifetime, my long life with the Lord, I've had many, many enemies. They have tried to destroy me, but God was for me. They went down the drain, and I'm still here. Most of the enemies that fought me when I was a young man are all dead, all dead. And I'm not rejoicing over their death because many of them God cut off in their youth. Many of them God cut off in, before they were 50 years old. Many of them God cut, cut off and broke them, took away all of their money before they were 60 years of age. I'm not rejoicing over that. I'm just telling you that God, if He is for you, you don't have to worry who your enemies are. You can sleep at night. Why? Because if God is for you, you are under God's protection. You're under His umbrella of protection. Now, who can get under that umbrella to get to you if God is watching over you? God never sleeps. God never goes on a vacation. God never forgets where you are. God never turns His back upon you. And if He's for you, then I want to ask you why are you looking around for some other person to be with you? If God be for us, then who in the world can be against us? He is our protector. And not only is God our protector, but He is our provider. I don't have to turn to somebody else and say, will you help me? God feeds me. If He feeds and takes care of the little sparrow in the roof of your house, and on, if He takes care of the animals of the field and the flowers that bloom out there where no eye, no human eye can ever see them, and yet they're in all of their gorgeousness and beauty. If God attends to them and looks after them, then I'm His child. And if God is for me, then who can be against me? As I look here in the Word of God, it says here that God is on His throne, and He is my Heavenly Father. What a wonderful joy it is to know when I wake up in the morning that my God is my Heavenly Father. And I've been a father three times. I have a lovely daughter. I have one little son that's in heaven, killed in a gasoline explosion when he was four and a half years old. I have another fine son who is a doctor today in Melbourne, Florida. And I have a four wonderful, precious grandchildren, and I love them. And, but I do not love my son and my daughter and my grandchildren like God loves me. I really do not. And I think I love them as much as any father on the face of this earth. But you will never be loved like you'll be loved by your heavenly father. So who can be against me because I'm under the protecting shelter in his pavilion? Who can come against me? when all that I need, everything that I need is provided from His supply house. And then not only do I find that I'm protected by His wonderful protection, not only am I provided for by His wonderful provision, but the Bible says that I'm preserved, I'm kept by the power of God. Now, is not a wonderful thought to know that I'm kept every second by God? A lot of people have to say, well, they say to me, preacher, I'd come to the Lord, but I'm afraid I can't hold out. I'm afraid I just can't endure. I never have had to hold out. I never had to have, to, have I had to hold on. God keeps me by His power. I am kept by the power of God. And I'm not expecting to fall. I'm not expecting to go down the drain because I'm kept by the power of God. So I am preserved by the Lord. I am protected by the Lord. And I am provided for by the great God. Now I want to ask you, where can I turn? Who could I go to that you could give me greater protection? To whom can I flee that will supply all of my need any more than God? You tell me. Who is it that can keep me better than the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit that dwells in my heart? Who can do it? Well, I don't know anybody that can. Do you know anybody that can do it? I don't believe so. So as I look here in the Word of God, I find that God is for us. He is our all and in all. Jesus Christ is all I need. All I need, I find in Him, and I seek His favor. I want His favor. God, I tell you, expects us to honor Him and honor His Son. 
And he says that if we'll honor his son, he will honor us. And the only way that I know to get God's honor is for you to honor him. The word of God declares in Psalm chapter 2 and verse 12, and this is a tremendous verse. It says, kiss the son, kiss the son, lest he be angry and ye, per- and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Blessed are all they that put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And it is possible for me as one of his children, just like it's possible for you as one of the children of your father to anger him, to disobey him, and to get out of his will. And there have been times when that's happened to me. And I mean the whipping that God gives me is unbelievable. But I can kiss him. I can ask him for mercy. I can ask him for forgiveness, and he'll do it. I remember on one occasion when I came home from the office, and my wife that day had been doing some washing of clothes, and she'd taken her watch off and put it on the cabinet drawer, on the cabinet uh, dresser, and Martha was four years old. And Martha had come in and found that watch, put it on her little arm, and went up and down Randall Street right here in Greenville. It was a dead-end street at that time, and our children played in the street. And she went up to the neighbor's houses, several of them, said, look what my daddy brought me. Look what my daddy brought me. And would show them that beautiful watch of my wife. Somehow or another, she put it down or somebody took it away from her. We've never seen that watch since that day. And when I came home, Murdy said to me, Harold, you're going to have to do something with Martha. She got my watch today and we can't find it. So when I would whip my children, I'd always send them back in what we call the back room let them stay there about 30 minutes and anticipate what they were going to get. And then I'd go into that room and I'd take out my belt, fold it over, and I'd bend them over on my knee and on that little part of anatomy where there's no bones. I'd just lay about three or four blows with that, with that belt. And they knew what that meant. They knew they had disobeyed me. They knew that they had done something wrong when I'd do it. So I went let her stay back there about 10 or 15 minutes. And I went back in the back room, and she was crying, so until she just snubbing. And she said, Daddy, let me tell you something before you whip me. And I said, okay, Martha, what do you want to tell me? She said, I love you, Daddy. I love you. Well, that took out about half of all that watch punishment. And I just kept pulling my belt out, and all the time she was watching that belt. And then she looked at me again, and she said, Daddy, before you whip me, may I tell you one other thing? I said, do one other thing. I said, you may. Where is the watch? She said, I don't know where the watch is, but that's not what I want to tell you. Daddy, I want to, I want to kiss you. I want to kiss you. And she walked over toward me, put out those little arms, put her arms up around my neck, and I was down on my knees. I want to tell you, I beat on the floor with that belt, but I never touched that child. There wasn't a watch in all the world that could have caused me, brother, to have whipped her. I learned a lesson. I learned a lesson that when I sin against God, when I've taken the watch and lost it, when I've done something I ought not to do, I want to tell God, but he says, you go back in the back room and wait for me. I'm going to have to chasten you. I'm going to have to whip you, Harold, because you did this. And I go back in that back room and I wait for him. And he comes in and I say, Lord Jesus, I know I've sinned. I know I've done something wrong. And I know I deserve this whipping. But Lord Jesus, before you whip me, May I tell you something? Yes, you may. Well, Lord, I want to tell you I love you. And he just continues to pull out that belt. And I said, one more thing, Lord, before you whip me, may I kiss you? And and when I go over and kiss him, much of his wrath, much of his fury vanishes. I learned a lesson, and I learned what the meaning of this wonderful verse here in Psalm chapter 2 and verse 12 really means, what have you done? What sin have you committed? What is that thing that's got you separated from God? The Bible says sickness won't do it. Sorrow won't do it. But I tell you, sin will separate you from God. What the Bible says, our iniquities have separated us from God. So if you have sinned, You're back in the back room waiting for God to come and bring that whip and whip you. 
and he will because he chastens all of his children. There is not one child of God, not one. Look, look into my face now, not one of you. But if you're a child of God, but you haven't done something wrong, and God whipped you. So who and how many of you are back in that back room right now waiting for the Lord to come with a whip? How many are you going to just stay and say, no, preacher, not me. I'm not going to, I'm going to be stubborn and rebellious. I'm not going to repent. I'm not going to ask God to forgive me. Well, God arrives and the whipping takes place. And when God whips you, you can say that you have been punished. Why don't you, while you're waiting for him to come, say, Lord Jesus, I love you. Lord, you're for me. I know you're for me. And I want to be for you, Lord, 100%. And you'll find that his punishment will bring relief, not punishment that will bring sorrow and heartache. The Christian life is one of faith in God. As our Heavenly Father, I look toward Him to look after me day by day and to give me my daily bread. The Bible says that by faith we are justified. By faith we have peace with God. By faith we have access to the throne of God. And then the Bible says that we are saved by grace. Saved by grace through what? Through faith. That means the blood is on our doorpost. The blood is upon our heart. And then the Bible says that we stand by faith. We stand by faith. That means that I'm anchored upon the rock of ages where I shall never fall and where that rock shall never crack up and where I shall never find this Esther. I believe with all of my heart and with all of my soul if I could get you to see if God be for you, then it doesn't make any difference who is against you. The most powerful being on this earth outside of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit is Satan. Satan is the third in power, or actually the fourth one in power on this earth. There is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, all of them with equal power, all of them with equal authority, all of them with equal ability, all of them with the same attri attributes, and here comes Satan. He is more powerful than a Solomon in all of his wisdom. He is more powerful than a Samson in all of his strength. He is more powerful than a Moses in all of his leadership. He is more powerful than a Goliath, a mighty giant of the Philistines. He is more powerful than the Caesars, all of them combined. He is more powerful than all of the dictators that ever lived upon the face of this earth. He is shown to us in the Bible to be the roaring lion. But if we know that God is for us, we can hear him roar, but he can't touch us. Hallelujah. I believe with all of my heart and with all of my soul that what we need most in this hour is to realize that God is for us. Do you know he's for you? He can't be for you. He cannot be for you if you do not know Jesus. The only way that God will ever be for you is for you to become a follower a friend, a depender upon the blood of Jesus Christ to save you. And if you refuse to accept Jesus Christ, you will never have God, the Father, for you. And you will stand in danger every second of your life. I'd be afraid to go to sleep tonight. I'd be afraid to get in my car in the morning and start to work if I didn't know Jesus. I'd be afraid, I'd be afraid to walk out on the street in any shopping center, I'd be afraid some thief, some robber would come in and shoot me down. I'd be afraid. I'd live in absolute fear if it were not for the fact that I know God is my heavenly Father. He is for me. God cannot be for you if you're a thief. God cannot be for you if you're for abortion. I don't care who you are, deacon, preacher, Sunday school teacher, church leader, President of the United States, it doesn't make any difference who you are, some member of the Supreme Court of the United States. God cannot be for you if you're from murdering in the first degree little innocent babies in their mother's womb. God cannot be for you if you are practicing homosexual. God cannot be for you if you're practicing lesbian. God cannot be for you if you're practicing an, alcohol an alcoholic, a drunkard. God cannot be for you if you're a liar. 
God cannot be for you if you are living an abominable life. God cannot be for you if you go to X-rated movies. God cannot be for you if you hate God's preachers. God cannot be for you if you have nothing to do with the church. God cannot be for you if you never pick up the Bible, never have a family altar, never look toward God and thank Him for all the blessings He's given you. Is that the reason God is not for you? Is it? You say, preacher, I never had anybody tell me that before. I never had anybody tell me that God is against me. This book that I hold in my hand says that God is angry with you every day if you're a sinner, if you're lost. I'm telling you that if you want God for you, you've got to come by the way of the cross. You've got to come to Jesus and say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm lost. I'm on my way to hell. And Lord, I want you for me, not against me. And that almighty God, the one that created the heavens and the earth and all that there is in them, you cannot look out of your window and see a great mountain. You cannot look out and see a great river. You cannot look out and see a butterfly. You cannot look out and see a mockingbird. You cannot look out of your window and see a lily or a little daisy. But what God created and made that, He made all that there is in this earth and just to have Him for you. He owns the whole earth. There is no one of you, not a man listening and looking at me right now, that would like to have Ross Perot as your friend and one that would look after your finances. <laughs> Boy, would it be wonderful, I tell you, to have a friend like Ross Perot. And brother, I tell you, a million dollars, he can just write out a check for you and put you on every radio and TV station in the country and pay for it, never miss it. Spend $60 million, brother, I tell you, on trying to be elected president of the United States and said, well, that's just the interest I make on my money in one year. That's all it costs me. Wouldn't you like to have a friend? But I've got a friend. I've got a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. I've got a friend that owns all, everything, and all I have to do is just say, Father, I need this, I need that, and right off the bat, here comes the answer to that prayer. Or God says, I can't do it right now for you, but just wait a while, and I will. And then sometimes He just said, no, J. Harrell, I'm not going to do that for you, but He's for me all the way, 100%, and He wants to be for you. We lay him into your heart right now while we close this program with a word of prayer. Our Father, out there listening and looking, I do not know, but Lord, I trust that you put some man, some woman, some boy or girl on that television set to watch us, and Lord, that they have been touched in their heart, and they say, I do want God. I don't want him against me. I don't want this almighty God my enemy. I don't want him to be my enemy. I don't want to have his wrath poured out upon me and my helpless family. But right now, Lord, I'm going to open the door of my heart. I'm going to let Jesus come in, and you're going to be for me for the rest of eternity. How wonderful it is. If God be for us, then who can be against us? We pray in Jesus' name, amen, and thank you. As Christians, we need to examine our lives for the presence of sin, which can separate us from God's protection. If we are lost, we need to give our lives to Jesus Christ and enjoy the peace and protection which He gives, even in the midst of difficulties. If you would like to know more about this work, go to the web address on your screen. This is Don Smith, and again, I want to thank you for watching this video today, and may the Lord bless you in every area of your life.